loose. Someone's got to be their friend. Yeah. I don't think, you know, it's like I've had girlfriends that are like really cuckoo and my friends have been like, she's bad news. She's crazy. I'm like, well, somebody has to love her. I mean, I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> if everybody walks away from her because she's nuts, she's going to be alone. Oh, uh, that was always the case with Brian Callen. With Brian Callen, mm -hmm. me and Brian Callen, like Brian Callen was always like the guy who took in all the strays. Yeah. He's like, everything's going to be fine. She's fine. She's fine. We're fine. <laughs> and I was always, you know, his friend going, hey, man, you got to fucking get out of this. Right. Like, you got to get out of this now. This is a, this is a dark road you're going down. Sure. This is only going to lead to doom. Yeah. And he was always like, hey, you know, someone's got to be your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had a few friendships and relationships like that. Yes. Where I'm like, this person is tough. Like comedian uh, friends that I've had that everybody yeah. else is like, I hate that guy. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. I'm staying friends with him. I get it. I'm not going to defend him all over the place, but oh, you're talking to me. I'm friend. friends with Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, you know. Jesus Christ. I mean, that's the ultimate example of that. Oh, yeah. On there a big go. scale too. That's got to be hard. The biggest scale. Oh, the God. biggest scale in the world. That takes a lot of fortitude to just to hang in there. He's not a bad guy. He, I mean, just, he, he had a psychotic break. Yeah. But Alex Jones got dumped on his head when he was in high school. He's speaking about getting bullied in high school. Yeah. This guy picked him up and pile-drived him, slammed hey, him I on heard, the concrete on his head. Was it John Ronson that did a documentary about him? or like a, He yes. did a thing on NPR. John Ronson did a thing with him where they both went to Bohemian Grove. Where he grew up? This No, no. Bohemian oh. Grove is this place in California where all the elites go, and they put fucking druid costumes on, oh, and they, they worship Moloch, the owl god. Oh, Jesus and, Christ. And Nixon went there. There and Reagan went, went there. there. Yeah. Oh, I oh, thought you were talking Bohemian about Bohemian like, Grove. Oh, you don't okay. know what it is? Nixon Bo and Bohemian Reagan went there? Grove is a famous place where mm. rich world leaders would meet in Northern California, and they literally worship this Moloch, the Owl God, mm -hmm. and pr and everybody thought it was bullshit. But John Ronson and Alex Jones snuck in, and this is in like the 90s. I want to say this wow. is the 90s. I've been friends with Alex since 1998. Wow. That's how I know him. I knew him back when he was protesting George Bush. And mm. he was saying that, you know, George Bush is a warmonger and a, a war Which hawk. And, for a uh, second W. One? W, when W was running for president. Yeah. Back when W was the, was the governor of Texas. Right. Um, so he, like, this idea that he was, like, this right-wing guy. He was always, yeah. like, this anti-power guy. But he was dumped on his head in mm. high school on the concrete. Jeez. When he was, you know, 15, 16 years old, and he was fucked ever since then. Yeah. And he has real mental problems sometimes. Mm. And if he's drinking a lot, and then he takes in too much conspiracy shit, yeah. he starts believing things starts that aren't real. Ruining folks' lives. Yes, and that's what he did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, he started believing. Fucking he horrible. really, be But horrible. he wasn't lying. He just was wrong. He yeah. really believed yeah. that the government had faked it to try to confiscate people's right. weapons. Like he's just. Well, I, I mean, but it was a, 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 a haze of drugs and booze and a psychotic break and like legitimate traumatic brain injury. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Well, you know, pretending that he wasn't the way to start this conversation. I remember when that happened, uh, Sandy Hook. That mm -hmm. was Sandy Hook, right? Yeah. And and uh, I remember that the media went up there right away. Yeah. I remember it made me really sick because there's such a horrible thing that happened. Yeah. And. What everybody should have done is just let the chief of police talk to you and let him say, we don't know you these things yet. Just wait. Just wait for information to come out of this very painful place. But the media flew in. Of course. And they're on the fucking grounds of the school. And Anderson Cooper is talking to fucking yeah. kids who were there. And their parents have their hands on the kids' shoulders. And you can see in both the kids' face and the parents' face that they're not sure they should be doing this. They don't know. They right. don't. We take for granted this thing of being exposed to the uh, media and being talking on cameras. Right. And there's been things, of course, in your life, in my life, where you say something or have an experience, and then afterwards you go, fuck, that was, I wish I hadn't said that. Right. Or I didn't know how this would feel, is the thing, right? So somebody who's not even in public life and who just suffered a un off the charts trauma, and Anderson Cooper and, their, and his producers going, no, you should talk, uh, talking them into it, saying you should talk to the world right now. You should be on the news talking about it now. We don't want to wait till later. We don't want to do an expose 10 years later, what was it like, or even a year. We want to know right now. So Why does it have to be now? Why can't you just talk to the to the stoic chief of police who yeah. says, here's what, why? Because you're fucked, because it's just dirty greed. It's just dirty, mm -hmm. I want it. It'll be great on camera. Yep. I don't give a fuck what happens to this person when I leave Sandy Hook today. I don't give a shit. I'll be back in my CNN studios. I'm picking him because that's the face I remember. Yeah. And the fact that they were there, it's just macabre and it's ghoulish. And it's gross, and it puts those people in a very vulnerable, fucked up position that they didn't anticipate. Yeah. They had no idea. And I'm talking out of school because I didn't experience what they experienced. But as a person sitting and watching, I'm like, I'm not being told too much. I know too much about this too soon. And if that's not because I need to know or it's going to help fix what happened, it's because somebody want, they just wanted it. Because it drives ratings. That's it. That's it. It's just money. Yeah. yeah. So, And that, there's been an extension of that throughout the history since yeah. then of every time something bad happens, nobody slows down. 
and thinks about. Well, there's also a thing that happens where you get eyewitness accounts that are all fucked up. And one of the reasons why eyewitness accounts that are, fu are fucked up is because when people experience a traumatic incident, their memory is very confused. They're the whole, you, you are working with a part of your brain that's like this yeah. reptilian part of your brain that's like completely freaked out that something horrible happened. And that, that happened after 9-11. Like after 9-11, everybody wanted to believe that there was some grand conspiracy because there was all these bizarre eyewitness accounts. Oh, I heard a bomb go off. I heard this. I yeah. heard that. Like, these they don't people know what they remember. They don't know what flabbergasted. They, they yeah. don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah. They were so overwhelmed and blown away by the moment. There just should be, every time something awful happens, there should just be a blackout, like just a period where let's not talk to anybody. Yeah. Don't talk to the traumatized. Well, going there and sticking a fucking microphone in their faces. It's just so it's gross. Evil. And it's par for the course. Yeah. It's like how it's done. Yeah. It and then they're reporting done. from the place. And imagine yeah. what it's like being in that community and there's fucking a, a van with a, like, yeah, what, the are satellite you, thing what are the you top? doing yeah. here? Yeah. It's, it? it's obscene. Yeah, it is obscene. It's obscene and it's normal. Yeah. I and mean, that's what they operate under. That's, that's their currency. Very, I guess so, yeah. Yeah. They don't think they think about it anymore. I don't think they think about it because there's a diffusion of responsibility when you work for a large corporation. That's the job that has to get done. Yeah. we got to go there. It's not my call. It was no. my call. I'd stay in the studio. I'm a good person. Right. 